together. Therefore, seeing we have this ministry, as we have received mercy, we thank not, but have renounced the hidden things of dishonesty, not walking in craftiness, nor handling the word of God deceitfully, but by manifestation of the truth, commending ourselves to every man's conscience in the sight of God. But if our gospel be hid, it is hid to them that are lost. All right, these are very important things. Now, verse number one, uh, therefore, goes back to the last verse in chapter 3, verse 18. What happened in verse 18? That he's talking about therefore and concerning that. What are some of the very important things he mentions in that last verse of chapter number 3? And it's at me. Well, we're beholding, we as Christians, mm -hmm. born again Christians and saved people, um, we behold the Lord, the glory of the Lord, as looking through a, a glass, All and right. we're changed um, into his image. You all right? Uh, Dr. Wayne? Yes, it's Paul. Uh, could, uh, are we in this first, could it also be referring to those that are uh, dead at Baxley? That are what? If, if what? You, those that are what? Backslidden. Those that are, I couldn't understand them. Backslidden. Oh, backslidden? Yes. Well, uh, glory of the Lord changed. <laughs> I don't know whether it's back. Is talking about verse, verse 1 or verse... Verse 1 or verse 18, 18 and chapter 3. Which one? Which one? Uh, uh, I think it's uh, verse 1 and chapter... I'm looking at verse 1, 2 and 3 and chapter 4. Well, we're back in verse 18, see any of the comments in that verse there, with open face, before holding as a glass, as Tammy said, that the word of God will change from glory to glory. If we follow what's looked in the scriptures and know it and follow it, the Holy Spirit of God can change genuine Christians from glory to glory. And that's where we pick up verse chapter 4, verse 1. Therefore, uh, what does Paul say he has in verse number 1? And how would you define that? Any hands on that? What does Paul say that he had? Yes, a John. ministry. A ministry. And uh, how, who gave Paul that ministry, John? That would be the Lord Jesus himself. The Lord Jesus Christ. Uh, there are ways to go to kill Christians and imprison them. Is this ministry. And because he has it, what is true? What did God give him the power to have? Pastor Dan. He was a recipient of mercy. There should be mercy. And how would you define mercy, Pastor Dan? Not getting something that is deserved. Not getting something we deserve. Paul deserved judgment. He's out to kill Christians. Uh, what did he do at the, at the stoning of Stephen? What was Saul's ministry there, Tammy? They laid their coats on his feet. So right. he was watching them, guarding the coats. He was in charge of the whole right. Okay, and was he for the stoning or against yeah. it? He was for it. Yeah. He was glad that Stephen, the first Christian martyr that read the scripture, was stoned to death. And uh, we see we have this ministry and uh, we've received. What is true of his, uh, his attitude in this ministry? The last part of verse number one. Yes. He John. would not faint. He'd be tireless. Tireless, doesn't faint. Now, in verse 2, I think we've got a little bit last week about it, but uh, what does renounced mean? The hands on that. Renounced. We have renounced. Yes. Anybody on that? Any hands on that? Renounced. What does that mean? Yes, Tammy. We've spoken out against it. Spoken out against certain things. Now, there's several things in here that are renounced, spoken out against. He's dead set against. He says, what's the first thing he's against? Pastor Dan. The hidden things of darkness. Hidden things of what? Dishonesty. All right, dishonesty. Yes, dishonesty. Now, what would that mean? Why are they hidden many times? Are, are dishonest things hidden or sometimes hidden? Yeah, tell me. Well, people don't always know they're, they're dishonest. Sometimes they think they're the truth. Okay, sometimes they think they're the truth. What else might be true of that? Just mm. better than that? Well, there are elements of dishonesty that are by very nature deceptive. All right. And so by by the nature of deception, the truth is hidden. All right. The real facts are hidden. 
And maybe they think that they're true, but on the other hand, maybe they know they're false and still dishonest. Right. Hidden things, questions at bftbc.org or 856-261-9018. Give us a call, comment, or just say hello. I'd glad to hear from our internet people as well. So I announced, first of all, the hidden things of this science. What's the second thing Paul has announced? Is that I don't want anything to do with this. Not so walking John, in craftiness. What do you think that would mean, John? Uh, craftiness. Craftiness would be that, um, very similar to dishonesty, it would be that, that, that way of manipulating and, uh, things in an in a improper manner to right. achieve a goal that, that you want. Uh huh. And a, a crafty person is. What kind of a person that might be crafty, Tammy? Someone that's sneaky. Mm -hmm. Sort of sneaky people, sneaky. Uh, is that reserved for unbelievers, non-Christians? Are some genuine Christians who maybe walking after the flesh a little yes. bit crafty? Mm -hmm. yes. John? Yes, I, I see that a lot in that, the church growth movements. Uh -huh. They know that some of the things are normal, but they, 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 one, one of those tenets is you know, you have to remove those that believe in the old ways. Uh -huh. And no matter what you got to do to get them out of there, you do it. Is that proper or improper? That's sir? improper. That's in, crafty. Improper. Though. That's crafty, isn't it? People are very sneaky and crafty. They're not open-faced about it. That's renounced. What's the third thing that's announced in verse number two? Very important renunciation. Any hands on that? Okay. Yes, John. Not, uh, handling the Word of God deceitfully. That's an important part, isn't it? Yeah. What does it mean to handle something in a deceitful manner? Isn't that lying? Uh, be, be dishonest, be dishonest. It could be dishonest, yeah, Linda. Could be lying. Could be lying, John. To twist the truth some to it. Twist it? To, to, to gain control of, of the people. All right. Now, as far as the Word of God, what do some people hold as the Word of God? And other people hold another word of God. And are they different? And if so, what's the difference to tell me? Uh, well, some people think that they should use the modern versions. Mm -hmm. And uh, we know that the King James Bible is the only one that's based upon the proper Greek and Hebrew texts. Amen. And, and so we want the pure word of God. Well, the mm -hmm. pure word of God, translated accurately to the proper Hebrew, Aramaic, and Greek words. And uh, the new modern versions, whether English, Spanish, French, German, uh, what is really wrong with them? And why are people so uh, glad to see them? And why do people continue to publish those other versions? The hands of that, they tell me. They want money. They want money. <laughs> when the money flies away, then they stop publishing. There's a rule about publishing Bibles. Uh, roughly, what does the rule say before you can publish another one? in the same language as published before you, tell me. There's a certain percentage that has to be changed. Mm -hmm. All right. Is that, I don't remember what the percentage is. Mm -hmm. I don't either, is it but... 10 or 20? Four, or four or five. Four, only four, four or five. Wow. It was a short number of percentages, and so they change them in order to make more money and publish whether English, Spanish, French, or German, at Linda. I heard something about, uh, there's a third testament. <laughs> The Third Testament. What did you hear about that? It's a part of the Bible. It's a new part of the Bible. A pastor Dan. Which is an example. The separate the panel of the Word of God. The right. separate about adding to it. The right. The, the primary thing. Yes. The seafoli. And, and so when you add to it, I mean, not just the extra testament. Sometimes people take away books, take away parts of it. Um, I mean, it's just in Rome, they've added a bunch of stuff to the to the to the what they and they want to claim it, they put it on the same levels. Mm -hmm. As the candy, you have other groups uh, that want to claim the writings of certain people to be canonical as well, in the same level of scripture. Mm -hmm. um, and so, and that's, that's taking it to pure words of God, and, uh, and it's, it's, it's deceitful in a certain mm -hmm. sense. To say that the writings of this particular woman or the writings of this particular man are equal or superior to the word of God. Mm -hmm. John, as Brother Dan was pointing out, you know, the, you know, like Rome would add the Apocrypha and try to say that's it. But the Mormons say that the Book of Mormon is another testament of Jesus Christ. Right. And it's not. It's not. Yes, you mentioned one thing, but the King of England demanded 
of the King James Translation 1611 that they insert into the Bible what? The Apocrypha. The Apocrypha. Uh, did they insert it? And so how did they insert it? Anna? Well, was it the king or was it some other people that were pressuring the king? Well, it was some people pressuring him, but the king agreed to it. And the King the King James translators, uh, did they change a little bit of what the king really wanted as far as the Apocrypha? And so how did they change it? I, believe, uh, I think he wanted it right in with it, mm -hmm. but they separated it and put it in the very back of the book. Behind the back of the else. book? Separated. Well, the, the back book. of the book? And it had to have to that. Well, rather than having it interdispersed throughout right. the Old Testament, and it's at the end of the Old Testament. The end of the Old Testament, between the Old and the New Testament, in the middle. Time, I believe. Yeah. But what is the Roman Catholic Church done with the Apocrypha and their false versions? What have they done with the Apocrypha? Nothing. Any hands on that? It's interspersed right in the Interspersed right in the Old Bible Testament or the New Testament. But they're not separated. It's not separated as a separate, distinct thing. The Roman Catholic version puts it right in between, as if it's equal to all the other verses of God. Which is a terrible thing. Uh, Linda? They don't teach the Bible in the Catholic Church when no. I was when I was growing up. Okay. No, they don't. They don't teach the Bible. Yeah, they are. The Bible. Which is another thing yeah. about handling the Word of God deceitfully. Handling it deceitfully. They don't believe it. Yes, they don't believe it. They're not teaching it correctly. In other words, uh, yeah. they're handling the Word of God deceitfully. Deceitfully, mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. and uh, if something differs with the Word of God from their teaching, what should they do? Throughout their teaching. Throughout their teaching, not throughout the Word of God. Pastor Dan. But sadly, their teaching is superior to the Scripture. The right? teaching is superior. a conflict between their teaching and throughout the Scripture. But the Scripture, rather than their teaching. Their, their yeah, yeah, Tammy, that Bill. Uh, Dr. Barnett shared something today on his Facebook page. Oh. And it was about the Pope and something. The Pope said that um, Something about the Bible being inferior to the church. I mean, which we uh, uh, we knew that anyway, but it was just which they teach. We don't believe right, they exactly. knew we, we knew that that was how yes. it stood, but mm -hmm. it was just it was just interesting. It seems like it was maybe a current thing that uh -huh. he made some proclamation or something. Yes, it's a bill. Yeah, this thing uh, that the Catholics have about uh, not believing the Bible. <clears throat> mm -hmm. What do they think their faith originates from? Okay. Uh, it all comes from the Bible. Mm -hmm. the, the Catholic Church wasn't started until the Emperor Constantine mm -hmm. uh, founded. Uh, but is uh, it true what you said? All their faith comes from the Bible. No. Okay. They don't. They don't uh, believe in the Bible. They all believe right. in their own traditions. Oh, tradition. They wanted uh, control over people's lives. They, mm -hmm. they wanted to have a means of uh, accumulating great wealth, okay. which they have successfully done. But right. Anna and Linda. Well, what Constantine did was he, he, he said he quote unquote legalized Christianity. He stopped, but then he made Christ, so called Christianity mandatory. But then he mixed it together with paganism, mm -hmm. and so then it was no longer Christianity, but something else. That's right. They didn't follow the Bible. Yeah, yeah Linda. They, um, they just, I forget, I forget what I was going to say. Oh, I'm sorry. That's yeah. right, you're fine. Yeah. But they, they, did, they just don't believe, they just, I don't know. It was hard to explain when I went to CCD. Uh -huh. They didn't make any sense. Mm -hmm. All they worried about was the sacraments more it's than the sacraments. Mm -hmm. right. uh, are, are all those sacraments right. are all the sacraments of the Catholic Church based upon the true Bible? No, no, no they're not. No. And uh, yes, Bill. Mother Teresa said uh, that it's better uh, to believe in the Pope and the traditions of uh, the Catholic Church than to uh, and to follow Jesus Christ. Mm -hmm. That's interesting. So in the in case of the Rome and many other churches, Protestant churches as well, they're adding things to the scriptures and they're taking away things to the scriptures and so doing, they're not following the clear teachings of the Word of God. And so uh, handling the Word of God deceitfully, that's a terrible situation. Yeah. So yes, Tammy. And, and a lot of these modern versions, those people are definitely handling the people that are doing the translating or doing the mm -hmm. uh, like um, different different people that work on the translations, they're definitely handling 
yes. uh, deceitfully, or those that are crea creating or compiling mm -hmm. or whatever they do to the mm -hmm. corrupt um, modern Greek text. Uh -huh. um, it seems like they would be handling the Word of God deceitfully. Mm -hmm. One of our missionaries, called Dr. Jack Mormon in London, has written two books. What are the two books, and what does he say in those two books, especially about the Word of God? And he hands on that. Hey, Tammy? So 8,000 Differences, is that what it is? All right, the one book is called 8,000 Differences between, in the New Testament alone, mm -hmm. between the King James Bible and the other modern versions. Now, does it just say there are 8,000, or does it say prove it? No, so how does it prove it? He, he shows each verse. He shows each, each of those 8,000 changes. Each change. That's it's, right. not, it's not a whole verse sometimes. It's, it's just, sometimes a little, little word, a little right. word here or there. Right. Right. Now, does it say every one of those 8,000 is as important as others? Mm -hmm. No. What does it dwindle down to, especially major importance? 356. Uh, 356. Oh, 300, does he write a book on those, or just says that those words? Does he prove that? Yeah. In another book, about 200 pages, it shows verse by verse, shows the Greek text, the false Greek text, the New Testament, it says these are doctrinal differences. Mm -hmm. So that's hand of the word of God deceitfully. Now does every genuine Christian know about these differences and changes? No. 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 Should they know about them? Yes. Absolutely. I had an email today from a man who asked a bunch of questions. What about this verse, and this verse, and this verse? Uh, why do they have this and how do they change this? I referred him by email back to Dr. Jack Mormon in London, England, and about these books he could handle that and help that man understand. Handling the Word of God deceitfully. Now, preachers, even genuine Christian preachers, do they always, as they preach, handle the Word of God truly and purely? No, they do not. And do they teach and preach, hopefully, Verse by verse, and tell their people the truth? Yeah, tell me. Yeah, one of the problems many preachers have is they take one verse of Scripture and they, they twist it and then they go off into some story mm -hmm. that's not really related to anything. Yes. Mm -hmm. What is the difference between textual preaching and topical preaching? Any hands on that? Textual preaching well, and top Yes, it's a, well, in one one step of preaching, you're sticking with a particular passage. Mm -hmm. um, so you're you're trying to limit your scope of thinking to that passage of scripture or mm -hmm. topic. You're you're going very broad on a topic, which sometimes would lend itself to getting off track, mm -hmm. from getting, away, getting away from the scripture. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Not always, but quite often yeah. that would happen. I just, I just had, I had a little confusion in my head mm -hmm. what question you asked, and so I got myself mixed up. Well, we'll get to actual time. <laughs> so we try in our church here to handle word by word, verse by verse of the Scripture, whether we're studying like we are in 2 Corinthians, whether we're preaching this Sunday morning services, or that job. The problem many of these preacher, preachers have, they want to do a topic, but they don't go to God's Word and take it, the whole counsel of God. Uh -huh. so that there's Fused like the patches that sure. support the position they have. Yes. And that's what they're build their entire sermon or sermon series on. Right, right, right. And they're not taking in the whole counsel of God yes. as the Word tells us. From yes. Genesis to Revelation, every verse yes. in between. Now, it's true sometimes we have to teach doctrines. Uh, like the virgin birth of Christ, the deity of Christ, the body of resurrection. Then if we teach those doctrines, we do take verses backing those doctrines, right. topical, but generally... Uh, people should know what is in the scriptures and verse by verse. Now, we've tried in our written ministry here at Bible Free Baptist Church, uh, especially from the book of Romans and Revelation, to write books and have verse by verse teaching from those books. And I've covered from first Romans to Revelation. Uh, we just completed and published today the books came in of 1 Corinthians. Now we have Romans, 1 Corinthians. I'm working on 2 Corinthians. Uh, one of our ladies finished that uh, uh, first chapter, first half of chapter 1, sent it to me, I'm working on that. So please pray for us. And when that 2 Corinthians is completed, 
We have to complete Romans and Revelation all the way through. So pray for us, trying to teach what the Word of God says. Now we're in Second Corinthians here talking about not handling the Word of God deceitfully. And then uh, what is true that Paul is doing in verse number 2 that's positive, not negative. Any hands on that? And that verse number 2. Yes, Tammy. It says, by manifestation of the truth. So he's making the truth known to, to the uh, hearers. All right. Questions at bftbc.org or 856 261 9018. Give us a call or comment on the internet. Then tell us, say hello. Just with us, he's manifesting to every man's conscience in the sight of God. And, uh, uh, Commending ourselves to our advanced Christ. What, how would we define conscience? And the hands on that. How would we define the word conscience, the Pastor Dan? With knowledge. Something that is with knowledge. Something you know, with it's knowledge. It's based on knowledge. That's all right. With knowledge. Con skill. It means with knowledge. And what is conscience supposed to do? And how does it not work properly? Tell me. It's sort of a mor moral compass or a moral, moral compass. Moral compass. how can tell us when it's right, what, when, what we're doing is right or wrong. All right. And how can it be mishandled conscience and misused conscience and defeated in the hands of that? Mm -hmm. Yes, Anna. It's seared with a hot iron. Mm -hmm. It could be seared with a hot iron. If it's seared with a hot iron, how does it function, Tim? Well, if we don't listen to the conscience, if it's it needs to be controlled for the Christian, it needs to be controlled by the Word of God, uh -huh. and so we need to be letting it be formulated through the Word of God. Mm -hmm. And if we're not heeding it, then then we're failing to obey the Lord. Mm -hmm. Pastor Dan, it doesn't work. You know, All right. Like, like yeah. Tammy was saying, you don't obey the order. You don't obey it. If it's no. seared, like Anna was saying, it doesn't work properly. When, a, when it's broken. F when flesh is seared without any pain or, or feeling, uh, what is true of that flesh? Better than that. Doesn't function right. There's no feeling. Doesn't function right. No feeling. Uh, now that's what. The doctors do sometimes when they have surgery, they want to have the painless, they cut in things, they just freeze at you might say and take away. Uh, it's sort of like a thermostat. What does a thermostat do if it's working properly and what does it not do if it's not working properly? No, it's hey, John? working properly, it regulates the temperature. Okay. And therefore, yeah. it's not, obviously it's not regulating the temperature. I think where you're getting at is, you know, how does, when a conscience is not being used correctly, is it, the person acts in an either immoral or amoral way. Yes, or right. the Tammy. Morality. Yes, Tammy. Well, you you set the you set the, the thermostat to whatever temperature you want it, uh -huh. just like you set your conscience by the word of God. Mm -hmm. And then, if the temperature in the room, we'll use that example again, as let's say you set it at seventy one. Mm -hmm. If it if it drops below seventy one, then the thermostat's going to tell the heater to kick on. Mm -hmm. And um, same way with our conscience. Mm -hmm. If we do something that's wrong, it will show us and demonstrate that we're doing something wrong if we have trained our, our conscience properly. Mm -hmm. uh, if, if genuine Christians, or non-Christians for that matter, are using the wrong Bibles, can their conscience tell them what is right and wrong? Not very well. Uh, very well. Okay, let's see what we got. Let me just forgot, well, forgot to put this on. There we go. Yes, the Howells from South Carolina. Go right ahead. Go ahead, David or Rebecca. Hey, Pastor. Yes, David. Oh, yeah. 
Praise the Lord. Thank you. Let's, let's uh, wave to the to the Howells there in South oh. Carolina. Thank you very much. So David and Rebecca. Appreciate that very much. Uh, the uh, now Pastor Dan did a great job. He knows how to operate our thermostat better than I do. And originally we had it set about 70. Is it Pastor Dan? It's a little chilly. Could you up at one degree? Yes. He knew how to do it, but I was how to do it. And then I asked him one way, is it possible maybe even one more degree? Yes, up to 72. One more degree up to 73, so we've got to set it 73, so it, it's a little bit so it's comfortable, not overheated, but not underheated, so we're comfortable in our church. That's like a conscience that's set in thermostat, so it, it functions properly, so it's comfort there. Pastor Dan. Good note here from Pennsylvania. All right. Uh, hello to everyone <clears throat> there and to others on the internet. I am enjoying the Bible study and interesting discussion. Julie. Julie Monahan from Erie, Pennsylvania. Wave to Julie. Thank you, Julie. Wonderful. She's going to have some uh, free time on, in January coming up, and she'll be able to come and visit us at that oh, time. Nice. We're glad to see her at that time, and thank you very much for, for talking to us, Julie. So this is verse number two, and it's many of the concepts of the Lord. Now in verse number three, <clears throat> what does the adversative conjunction but mean? And how is it used in verse two, and why? And he hands on that. Second Corinthians 4, 3. And tell me. In contrast to the above. In contrast. What is it contrasting here? And is it an important contrast or an unimportant contrast? Any hands on that? Important. Yes. Important, Linda, yes. What is it talking about? Yeah, tell me. Well, it's talking, he's talking in verse 2 about manifestation of the truth. Or, All right. Or revealing or making known mm -hmm. the truth. Mm -hmm. But now it says if our gospel be hid. All right, now, how does the scripture in, uh, define gospel? What's the definition of the word itself, then what does it contain, or should it contain? And does it always contain that, or are there false Gospels? Pastor Dan, and then John. In the very broader scope, I mean, part of the Gospel is that all men are sinners. All right. You know, but then the, the, another aspect, the good news, is that there's a remedy for that. Okay. The remedy is the, the blood of Jesus Christ. All right, John. Yeah, well, then I might have worded it a little bit differently. The gospel okay. is good news, and All right. you know, it needs to contain the, best, the death, burial, and resurrection of the Lord Jesus Christ. All right. Uh, and yes, there are false gospels out there that's being, being preached uh -huh. so pervasively in modern churches today. False gospels. Yes, and the, the Greek word is what? Evangelion. El is what? Angelos is what? El is, is true and pure and fine and good. Mercy. And Galilean is what's that? Messenger. Angel, isn't it? Angel. It's good it's news. Angel. It's from Angel. It's from news. It's from news. It's from, it's from news. It's from news. It's from news. So good news, proper news. And what should the proper news be? Now, John mentioned some of it. What's the proper news that Pastor Dan mentioned some of it? What is the gospel, the good news that should be proclaimed? Goodness of the Lord. The news of the Lord, that's right. And what is some of the news that is bad news, false gospel, untrue gospel? And was Paul's gospel good or bad? Is yes, our gospel? Pastor Dan. Well, the doctrine of universalism. <clears throat> doctrine of universalism. How, universalism. how would you define that, Pastor Dan? Universalism. Oh, everyone does not have no hell. No heaven, no hell. I mean, there, there could uh, be heaven. Was, to believe that everybody yeah. goes to heaven. Yeah, everybody goes to heaven. If the they see this of hell, they dismiss that, then the Muslims will dismiss the existence of heaven, too. But they, uh -huh. they don't. The bill. That's uh, the core of uh, humanism. All right. Is it true or false? It's false. Now, mention, people mention the false gospels. Uh, uh, so, yeah, John, uh, go ahead, uh, Paul. Another, another uh, thing about false gospels is they... Some believe that if you say you lose your salvation, which is false. Some gospels teach you can you lose your salvation. Once you're saved, if you sin, you can just lose that salvation. Is that scriptural? 
No. No, son. Yeah, Tammy. The gospel of works. Gospel As works. if that's good news. <laughs> what is the gospel of good works? How would you define that, Tammy? Well, just of works in general. I mean, some churches teach, in particular Roman Catholics, uh -huh. that there's sacraments and different things you have to do in order to earn your way, earn your way mm -hmm. to heaven. Mm -hmm. Can any man, woman, or child earn their way to heaven? Mm -hmm. No, impossible. What is the only way to get the truth and send people to heaven? What's the only true goodness? Anna? Well, only the righteousness of Christ can satisfy, and one has to accept that. And All right. say that this I, instead of trusting my own righteousness, I am trusting the righteousness of Christ. All right. And uh, all the works that we might do can't save us. Right. All the deeds, all the church membership, <clears throat> baptism, or all kinds of ordinances. Uh, but there's got to be a true... Now, they're in the good news of the gospel. There's always bad news as well. Uh, what's the bad news that the gospel makes very, very clear? The bad news. That there is a literal hell. That there's a literal hell. That's bad news. Yeah. You gotta prove it. It's a, it's a, a linen. Well, Pope Francis doesn't say there is a. Pope Francis said there is no hell. He yes, yes, says that. Yes, yes, yes. Just a minute. We'll get that for the time. We'll be next. We'll see what Barbara has to say. Yes, hello, Barbara Lester from New Jersey. Where, right, Barbara? That's crazy. Hi, Pastor. Hi, everybody. Just coming in and saying hi. Hi, Barbara. See us, wave, or wave anyhow. Go, okay, thank you very much. You wish you'd come and see us. Yes, uh, Tammy had something on this. About the bad, the bad news. Good news, Pastor Dan. Well, I mean, the position of poor people area was all wrong. It's not based upon scripture. This is based upon all right. his own tradition and his own thoughts. And by proclaiming the fact there's no hell doesn't mean it's true. That's right. It's right. false. Yeah, Bill and then Tammy. Yeah, this, uh, the Pope is judging uh, just like every other human. He's going mm -hmm. by how he would judge if it were up to him mm -hmm. to pass judgment uh, on people. How yeah. would he judge? Yeah, okay. God, uh, we can't measure up to God's standard. No, uh, that. Okay, go ahead. <laughs> so, you know, we have to get the message from the Bible mm -hmm. uh, to understand what God expects of us. Uh-huh. Uh, Tammy. It's bad news that we're under condemnation and that the sin of Adam has passed upon all men so that all have sinned. Mm -hmm. And what was that thing that Adam passed to every person from then on right through the ages? Sin. The nature. Sin, the nature of sin. Mm -hmm. And physical death because of his sin there in the Garden of Eden. Who was the first one that committed the sin? Eve. Eve. And then he followed but God does not condemn the whole universal people because of Eve's sin, but Adam. He was the federal head of the race. And uh, so, and who is the spiritual head if we follow the spiritual head all the way down through the hints of Jesus Christ. Lord Jesus Christ. Lord Jesus Christ. He's the second man, the second Adam, the one that God has sent into the world. Now, we have the bad news. Uh, the gospel has good news. What is the good news? The bad news, we're all sinners, bound for hell, if we don't make any difference, it changes. What is the good news that people should believe and trust? Uh, excuse me, Dr. Wade. Good. Okay, Paul. Uh, the good news is that uh, even though we're all sinners, we still have the Lord Jesus Christ to die house and be saved. All right, believe in the Lord Jesus Christ and have saved. What, what else is a part of that good news? Tammy, has something? Yeah, no. Okay. Um, <laughs> what else is the good news? I'm sorry. Anna? I said I'm sorry. Okay. John? And we have a Redeemer. We have a Redeemer. And what does that Redeemer do? He, he died. He bled on the cross. He didn't just die on the cross. Anybody could have died on the cross, All but right. he did. All right. But the well, fact that he had perfect blood in his body, right. untainted uh -huh. by this by the sin nature of either his mother or, 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 or a natural father, which he did not have. Uh -huh. why, did, did not have. why did he die on that cross? What was the purpose of God that he could get at Anna, I mean, Diane? Uh, Diane. Uh, 
Purpose us for our sins. All right. To die. Now, for how many sins did the Lord Jesus make provision for and die for? The whole world. From, the whole world. From, di from, di from what Adam is, and Eve to yeah, the end I'll of the world. I'll tell you what some, do some people right. teach in regard to whose sins he died for. What are some false teachings on that? He has on that. Yeah, John? You have the, um, um, you have the name that. There are those who believe that only the elect, the Calvinists, the Calvinists. Only the elect only. And you don't know who they are. These hyper Calvinists, a certain group of people who died for sin. What do they think about the sins of the rest of us? And maybe not be the elect. It doesn't matter. Is that, did he die? Does they believe he died for those sins? Yes, no. Linda? I believe he died for everybody's sins. But, but what are the false teachings of the hyper Calvinists? What do they teach about that? Hey, Bill? They were chosen for condemnation. Mm -hmm. Some of them actually be the real hyper hyper count say he, he, he chose, chose two people. Some that died and go to hell, some that they have relaxed, they go to heaven without anything they have to do. It's automatic. Yeah, Anna. But we we believe that Christ did die for the sins of the whole right. world. Yes. But um mm -hmm. only those who believe and trust him can um make may it's only effectual all right. For, for the, those who believe and trust him. Now, should the whole world, world believe and trust, they could. But sadly, we know that the whole world will not believe and trust. Good. What's the difference between the two words provision and possession? And the hands on that. What's the difference? Technically? Ownership. Ownership, mm -hmm. all right. And did the death of the Lord Jesus Christ make provision for the sins of everybody in this world. Yes. Yes. Does that mean automatically they have possession of eternal life? No. Mm -hmm. What must they do in order to have possession of that provision? Tammy? They must trust the Lord Jesus Christ as their Savior. Okay, trust Him. Just in their, their heads? No, you trust thoughts? Him with your heart. In their hearts. Believe sincerely, He died for your sins, and then, not simply provision, but possession. Now, when does that possession take place? When you die, or when does it take place? Eternal life. The hands on that? When you're born again? When you're born again, the minute you trust genuinely the Lord Jesus, mm -hmm. immediately. Let's say John 3.16 on that. For God so the world, and he gave his only begotten Son, and whosoever believeth in him should not perish, but have everlasting life. life. Now, whosoever believeth in him, not simply with the head, but with the heart, should have, that's present tense right now, everlasting life. Mm -hmm. Now is everlasting life everlasting if we can lose our salvation? Nope. No. no, it's not everlasting life. And uh, are there groups of people that teach that you can once have a mm -hmm. everlasting life, then lose it, and if so, what do they teach and what kind of groups are there? And is it right or wrong? Well, there, there are those that teach that you can lose it. Uh, uh, the Pentecostal. Yes. There was one. You know, they, they, they believe that uh, you can. There are, there are some groups that some of them say you can't lose it, but you can give your salvation away. You, uh -huh. can, you can give it back to the Lord. But okay. the Lord doesn't tell us that. It tells us that any, anyone the Father has placed in his hand, mm -hmm. he has a further. No one can take well, that out of Yes. Yeah. Yes. Tell me. Well, the Charismatics, the um, Nazarenes, the Armenians, mm -hmm. the Mennonites, the um, Amish, well, the yes. Amish, I'm not even sure if they understand salvation. But, mm -hmm. um, A lot of different groups. Mm -hmm. Yeah, Anna. It is going back several minutes, but um, it says here, John Fox tells us that one day an exasperated Catholic scholar at dinner with Tyndale said, we were better be without God's law than the Pope's. In response, Tyndale spoke his famous words, I defy the Pope and all his laws. If God spare my life ere many years, I will cause the boy that driveth the plow to know more of the scripture than thou dost. That's interesting, isn't it? Like that isn't it? Yeah. What does the word everlasting mean? Forever. And that, forever. And if... He that believes on the Son, the Lord Jesus, 
shall not perish. What does perish mean? Aunt Tammy? To die eternally. Uh, eternally, and that means in hell. It, in hell itself shall not perish. But have, what does have mean? What does have mean? Possess. Day? Possess. Right now, present tense, mm -hmm. everlasting life. I like John 10, especially. Uh, is it 21, 22, 23, something like that? Uh, well, how does it start? I, in my phone, I John 27, 10, 27. Yeah, 10, 27. Um, I give unto them eternal, eternal life, life, and they shall never perish. I give unto them eternal life, and they shall never perish. That's not really how it starts. Right. John 10, 27, my sheep hear my, my voice. My sheep hear my voice, voice and they follow me. And I give unto them, I know they follow me, I give unto them eternal life, everlasting life. And they, they shall, shall never perish, perish neither shall any man pluck them out of my hand. My Father which gave them me shall greater than I, and no man shall put them out of my Father's hand. I and my Father are one. Now well, that's security, isn't it? Amen. Security the hand of the Lord Jesus Christ in the Father's hand. Never, never, never pluck them out. I don't see how people that believe they can lose their salvation. I don't understand that. Yeah. That God has promised that shall never perish. What does never mean? Forever? Forever. Yeah, Bill. Bill. Yeah, I, I don't understand how anyone can feel uh, that they have the power of salvation themselves or uh, <clears throat> that they, they could possibly lose their salvation when the actual saving is performed by God. Himself. Yes. yes. That's yes. done by God. We are absolutely helpless. Mm -hmm. And if you've been put under, uh, rendered unconscious from uh, <clears throat> for anesthesia or anything, you know that in that position, you have no ability at all to make decisions or mm -hmm. to do anything mm -hmm. in that state of mind. When we die, we are entirely in God's hand mm -hmm. or the devil's hand, one or the other. We mm -hmm. can't, uh, unlike uh, the Hindus and uh, uh, the Buddhists who believe they can uh, determine uh, their own salvation by becoming enlightened, as they call it, mm -hmm. uh, which is really nothing anyway. Uh, but <clears throat> you have absolutely no power of your own. God mm -hmm. has all the power. All right. That's good. Now, Paul in verse number 3. 2 Corinthians 4 and verse, uh, 4 and verse 3, if our gospel be hid. Now, our gospel refers to what? What does Paul consider to be our gospel? What does it mean to be hid or hidden? Any hands on that? If our gospel be hidden, Pastor Dan and uh, John. Now, Paul, go ahead, Paul. You first, go ahead, Paul. Uh, I, think what, I think what Paul is saying here is that that says that, but if our gospel be hidden, it is hidden to them that are lost, meaning that they don't, they don't, they don't understand. <clears throat> All right, that's that's good. My friend, who who was that? Just Dan, and then like, Dan. That's like what Paul was saying. It's like it's concealed to those that are right. that are blind, that are dead in trespasses of the sin. All right, concealed, and John. All right, I was going to say the hidden would be like it's a secret. And All right, it's not a secret. All but right. No, it tell me. That's sort of like the blindness of chapter mm -hmm. 11 in Romans, uh -huh. where Israel was blinded to mm -hmm. the gospel of the Lord Jesus Christ. And uh, if it's hidden, to whom is it hidden in this verse? Only to the lost. And what does the lost include? The word that whole company of people call the lost. Yeah, tell me. Good Paul, good Paul. I have a question. Does it say that the natural, the natural man doesn't understand? Right. I, I forgot where it said that. Yes, the natural man doesn't understand. And Tammy? Uh, so your question again? Uh, who does the lost include? It includes Hidden. anyone who is not saved and regenerated, All born right. again by the Holy Spirit of God. All right. Do some teachers and churches believe that everybody is not lost, but is found and safe and secure and going to heaven. 
Some teachers teach that. Some yeah, churches. Others, yes, they do. It's universalism. Yeah. Universalism, that's false indeed. Hid to them that are lost. Those that are not really good. Yes, tell me. It seems like anymore the Roman Catholics are all saying that anyone who's attending the Catholic Church regularly is is automatically going to heaven uh -huh. when they die. It is that like true or false? No. That's how Just scripture. going to church does not save no. anyone. Is there any verse in scripture that tells you to go to a church, whether well, our church, any other church, Roman Catholic, Methodist, uh, denominations, Episcopal, uh, is there everything verse in the scripture that just by going to attending the church can save us? No. There's nothing in the Bible that tells us that. That's right. I think we'll stop right here in this verse. Do we have any other comments or questions? Pastor Dan. Yeah, I have a, uh, someone sent a, a comment, an email. I've got to figure out what I'm... Um, um, Do it's from Cliff. Yeah, Cliff. Cliff Hill. Um, he says... Um, from Cliff. Neil Cliff, or is it Cliff Neil? Cliff oh, Neil. Cliff Neil. Cliff um, Neil. Okay. Speak of lies and hypocrisy, or, or, or through the hypocrisy of those that speak lies, for the apostles still speak of by means by which the apostles should rise and get ground, and by means of a person delivering lying or false doctrine under the, uh, under the deception of truth, great presentation of religion, holiness, and so forth. I have the conscious serve the hierarchy, which is exactly describes about makes the persons whose consciences are, are cauterized. That's the that's cauterized. cauterized. That's the idea of um, yeah, cauterized and hardened in past feeling and have no regard to what they say or make, on no conscience of anything but in a cloak of sanctity, commit the most shocking impieties and are men of the most inf infamous character and the most enormous and scandalous lives. In conversation so that the metaphor may be taken either from the seeing, or the searing the flesh, or the iron, or the cauterizing of it, whereby it grows callous and hard, or from the stigmas or marks which used to be put on malefactors, or such as have been guilty of notorious crimes. Well, let's, I mean, well, let's wave the cliff who said that statement. Very good. Thank you, Cliff Carlson. Again. And Pastor Dan, I forgot again to start the Tape. So if you can help us out tomorrow, I'll give the CD <laughs> tape as well. Any other comments or questions before we close tonight? Yes, That's John. talking here in verse 3. Now, our gospel will be a hint and it's not hit. You know, man has been looking for secret knowledge since yes. the beginning of time. Right. And then there is no secret. It's so out in the open that they yes. just can't accept the simplicity of the true message. What's the, the true truth. message? That's very good. Any other comments or questions before we close? Let us close in order to pray for Our Father, we do thank Thee for the clarity. In this book of Second Corinthians, this chapter we looked at, we thank Thee for Thy grace. We thank Thee for Paul's knowledge of the truth that Thou hast given to him. Thank Thee that we can have that knowledge as we study Thy words in the proper Bible, English, Spanish, French, whatever it may be, that we can understand what pleases Thee we thank Thee for eternal life. We thank Thee for the death of our Lord Jesus, for our sins, the sins of the world, that we by genuine faith, not in some church, not in some doctrine, not in some false teaching, but in the Lord Jesus Himself can possess eternal life. We thank Thee for it. With us, give us wickets back on the Lord's day for more truth and study of Thy Word. In Jesus' name we ask and pray. Amen. 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 Yes, thank you.